Welcome everyone. Thank you for your interest in looking into the opportunity to provide out of school time programming for students in Ohio. Today, more than ever, students are pushed to reach their fullest potential. In many districts, the cost access to resources and other supports are limited, making it difficult for student achievement to occur. The event of the 21st century, the intent, I'm sorry, of the 21st century funds is to enable communities to design and implement effective out of school time programs that will result in improved student outcomes. Welcome to today's webinar. First, before we begin, I would like to introduce the team that you will be hearing from today. My name is Shannon Teague. I serve as the assistant director in the Office of Innovation, Improvement and Innovation. The regions that I oversee is the central region um, and of, of Columbus. You will also hear from Charlotte Jones Ward, who is an education program specialist. Her regions are the Southeast and Northwest region. Charlene, Charmaine Davis Bay, education program specialist. Her region is the Northeast region. And then Nina Paste, who is our financial program manager, and her region is the Southwest region. You will hear from each one of us as we continue through the slides this morning. Please, um, as we go through, ask questions and we will answer questions at the end. Hold on, please. We're getting some feedback that some people cannot hear. Uh, can about 10, 15 people? I can hear, I'm hearing, no. Keep going, please. We just wanna fix any issue that we may have. Audio works on mobile now, If you're on Skype, can you let me know if you can hear? I saw one. Thank you, Amanda. If they still have an audio issue, they can always do the audio bridge. They don't need a pen. They can just dial in. No, okay. Shannon, just have them call the number. To call so if you are hearing, our tech um, assistant here just said that you can call in to hear. We'll give everybody about two minutes to do that. Thanks, everyone. Let's wait for about two minutes for participants to call in that can't hear. That was a significant number that can't hear.
Okay, we are ready to continue on. For those of you who couldn't hear, I'm hoping you can hear now, we're not going to review. We simply just said in the first minute, welcome and thank you for coming and the importance of 21st century. Again, I thank everyone on the call for your interest in looking into the opportunity to provide out of school time programming for students in our state. So purpose of the grant, the, this competitive grant competition is to identify and support strong applicants with the implementation of out of school time and expanded learning time that will enhance academic achievement and social and emotional growth. The purpose, however, of the 21st century program is number one, to provide opportunities for academic enrichment to assist students in meeting the state academic standards. Next, offer students access to a broad array of additional services, such as those that focus on youth development and social and emotional learning, civic engagement and nutritional and physical health. And then lastly, offering adult family members of program participants opportunities for educational development and engagement in their children's education. It looks like the slides may not be moving. Hold on for just a second, please. That's why I was Again, the purpose for this comp competitive grant competition is to identify and support strong applicants with the implementation of out of school time and expanded learning time that will enhance academic achievement and social and emotional growth. However, the purpose of the 21st century program is threefold. One, it should provide opportunities for academic enrichment to assist students in meeting the state academic standards. Next, it should also offer students access to a broad array of additional services, such as those that focus on youth development, social and emotional learning, civic engagement, and nutritional and physical health. And then lastly, offer adult family members of program participants opportunities for educational development and engagement in their children's education. 
Each year, we tend to have a little bit of a different focus in 21st century. This year, our changes are very minimal. Our grant focus this year continues to be having have a funding priority um, that will that will again continue on our rural programming. In other words, this means that after our competition and all applications are scored, a third of our top scoring rural grants will be funded first. Next, in this year's grant, another focus or I should say improvement is in the RFA, you will notice that we that we gave a full listing of our program performance measures. I believe last year we only had the objectives and this year we also have the measures in those objectives. So please look carefully when you are completing your applications so that you um, are sure to address all of the performance measures. Next, Appendix C. We added Appendix C for the partnership agreement. And this year, applicants are asked to complete that partnership agreement in its entirety, including signatures, and then simply upload that agreement into the application. And then lastly, our prompts. What we did here is we simply broke apart questions. We didn't change questions. What we broke apart questions, building clarity and aligning the scoring rule brick with the application, all done to assist in easy um, completion. The intent of the 21st century funds is to enable communities to design and implement effective out of school time programs that will result in improved student achievement. Ultimately, the programs shall be enhanced by and sustained through community partnerships beyond the term of the grant. This year's grant opportunities remain the same for those, for those that are returning than last year. We have three options. In option one, that is a focus for those applicants who are interested in expanded learning time. This again is for all grades. In, if you select option one, this option is for um, utilizing funds during the day. You must offer a minimum of 300 additional hours, additional meaning um, more than you did last year, during school hours and summer, must show evidence that you expanded the day, and then the grant um, amount for option one is a minimum of 50,000 with a maximum of 200,000, and, and that is actually for all of our options. For option two, this is uh, our out of school time option for elementary school. The after school program, you can select to do some during uh, uh, before school and summer in this option. In option three, same thing as option one, except for the focus is with our middle and high school students. Applicants here need to also demonstrate their focus in college and career readiness or and or dropout prevention. Within your applications, applicants must outline how they will involve the community. Collaboration for 21st century is as outlined here in the slide. First, an LEA must partner with a community-based organization or, um, and, or, or vice versa. A community-based organization must partner with an LEA. A requirement that we've built last year that we're going to continue this year is that all of our 21st century programs are now required to connect with their district support teams and or their building support teams. Superintendents around the state are very familiar with this requirement. They too have the exact same requirement. School improvement focus is a huge focus now in the state of Ohio and our superintendents are well aware 
that uh, our 21st century programs need to be pulled into the fold and you need to plan and demonstrate that you're planning to be a part of the district support teams and or building teams. Thank you, Shannon. Um, now we are going to go into our discussion about sustainability. Again, this is Charmaine Davis Bay. I am the education program specialist and consultant for um, the Northeast region. Um, and I am going to be discussing sustainability and the importance of that. Um, as an applicant, you should be aware that 21st century grants are not intended to provide programs with long-term sustainability of expanded learning and out-of-school time programs. As partners, LEAs or local education agencies and CBOs or community-based organizations should be making the constant and consistent effort in working together to ensure that those necessary links of sustaining 21st century programming happens beyond the grant cycle and is deemed priority. As applicants, both entities should come together to leverage community-based resources for long-term continuation of their program. This must be stressed as well. All 21st century programs are required to develop and fully implement a sustainability plan throughout and through the end of your grant cycle, which should be focusing on maintaining programs through the end of the grant cycle. Programs are used, programs should be using effective strategies to operate at matched or reduced funding with sustainability plans describing how that program will ultimately sustain itself. Regarding Regarding hours of operation, for elementary school-based programs, your hours should be at least 15 hours a week. For middle and high school programs, that number should be at least 12 hours a week. And these are minimum hours required to operate your programs with 21st century funds. Regarding program start date, programs that are funded for FY19, should and beyond should be um, should have started no later than October 15th of 2018 and your program should end no early that should say no earlier than April 18th 2019 so again program start dates should be no later than October 15th 2018 and program end dates should be no earlier than April 18th 2019.
funding. Funding for this grant is contingent upon the department's receipt of federal funding. Keep in mind that the grant cycle is a five-year funding period, depending on evaluation results, grant compliance, and again, contingent upon available funds. The first three years of allocation is um, comparable to your initial budget. For example, if you um, budget $200,000 the initial year of the grant, the first three years your allocation will be the same. The first, um, it then decreases in years four and five at 25% each year. So like I said, if you do allocate for 200,000 in the fourth year, your budget is decreased um, to 150,000. And then in the fifth and final year, the allocation will be decreased another 25% to $100,000. Um, and this is done to for purposes of, for you to begin to demonstrate sustainable programs and sustainable funding and resource efforts. You may request a minimum of $50,000 and a maximum of $200,000. Um, also, um, in regard to the funding for your continuation period, um, pending a successful continuation plan, which demonstrates meeting established outcomes and measures, will be considered. And that application period is the same time as the new application period um, in the CCIP annually throughout the grant cycle for the five years. All subrecipients are required to submit the continuation plan via the CCIP. Programs must be implemented upon notification of the award. There is no planning year for this grant award. In other words, your application is your plan and the plan should be ready for full implementation upon receipt of the award. Funding priority. With this grant, to add, grant funding may serve students that attend schools that have been identified by the school district and or ODE to need intervention and support. Ohio's 21st century program must primarily target students that are enrolled in Title I school-wide buildings. An additional priority is considered, um, will be focused on geographic distribution to ensure um, it, the, this, um, that this occur even in um, and even a fair distribution throughout the state. Um, earlier, Shannon mentioned the competitive priority to be small town and rural. So Ohio will reserve at minimum a third of its FY19 funding for small town and rural programming. Applicants must select in the application, their district typology designation to this to receive this priority. So be sure when you're completing that application that you mark the box for um, small town or rural if you um, feel you meet that typology. Um, we will also confirm on our end. It is highly recommended that applicants review the information at the links below on this section of the priority funding priority, which is on page four of the RFA. All subrecipients of federal funds are required to understand and be accountable for implementing programs within the law. So these resources that we do provide to you gives you the law, as well as the um, US Department of Education's non-regulatory guidance platform. Submission. This application is an electronic submission. Um, applicants must have access to the Comprehensive Continuous Improvement Plan, which we call the CCIP. The CCIP is an, a secure electronic portal. 
This is the only way that you can submit an application. We do not accept fax, email, um, postal mail um, applications at all. So therefore, in order to gain access to the CCIP, there are a couple things that you would need to know. First, um, organizations that are applying for the 21st Century Grant for the first time, you need to ensure that you have an employer identification number, also known as EIN. You will also need an information retrieval number. That information retrieval number is generated and assigned by the Ohio Department of Education. Um, so there are links below that will take you to an IRM request form. So make sure that when you submit that IRM request form that you are aware of all staff that will be assigned to um, inputting information into the application so they can have a role for your organization. <coughs> In, in doing so, they also have to have a safe account. So each individual person must have their own safe account in order to be assigned a role for your organization. Okay, so you wanna make sure that that's done first. Um, last but not least, and we will edit and update um, the RFA to include this information, but each organization must have a DUNS number. So, in order to receive payment from the Department of Education, once you are awarded a grant, um, you will have to make sure that that DUNS number is associated with your IRN number for the agency. In order to complete the application or to move the application through the various stages of approval, users must have the following roles. So the first important role is the CCIP authorized representative, which is comparable to a district superintendent. They will have full access and rights for final approval in the application. Next is the CCIP fiscal representative slash treasurer. This person is responsible for the budget and also um, approves prior to the authorized rep. The third rep, um, role is the OHR administrator. This administrator is responsible for updating the Ohio Educational Directory System for your organization. So this person should be someone that's familiar with who need access, technology savvy, so they can um, update OEDs to input personnel roles. The fourth role that is required is the data entry funding. The data entry funding CCIP will grant you access to the funding application. So this can be multiple individuals, um, either with the organization, with the applicant, or um, with the primary partner. So if you have a partner that's inputting information into the application, then you would still need to ensure that um, the data entry funding role is assigned. You can mark out, and we will update the um, RFA, mark out data entry planning. We no longer use that role for purposes of the 21st century application. The final role at this point that is actually required is program manager 21st century. This um, role indicates that you will have access to the compliance monitoring system. Um, with this role, um, you will have access to submitting um, the first year implementation documentation, any type of fiscal um, report um, review documentation, as well as compliance documentation during the second and fourth years of compliance. The last role, um, data entry planning or data entry, um, and data view planning and data view funding, those roles are read only. Highly recommended if you want someone to proofread the docu any information that you have entered into your application at any point. And you can have multiple personnel assigned to the data view planning or data view um, funding roles in which um, you just really need the data view funding. Once the application draft is complete, only the assigned treasurer, the CCIP fiscal rep, or and or the superintendent 
um, can approve the draft applications. They can also return them. So my recommendation is for you to communicate with your treasurer and your superintendent at all times during the application period. Um, the Ohio Department of Education does not receive ap the application until the superintendent, which is the CCIP authorized representative, final approves. So the application will close promptly at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on April 27th. So your status must be CCIP authorized representative no later than 5 p.m. on April 27th, and there are no exceptions. Next, we'll go into eligible applicants. Eligible applicants may be a local education agency and community-based organizations. Community-based organizations also would include faith-based organizations, higher institu um, institutions of higher education, any type of city or county government agency, um, for-profit organizations, or even not-for-profit organizations, um, and other public or private entities. So you are eligible if you fall within that category. Um, with the grant, there is a primary partnership requirement. So as the applicant, you must part have a primary partner. As the eligible applicant, if you are a LEA, which is a local education agency, you must partner with a community-based organization, which is a CBO and vice versa. So if you are the um, applicant and you are a CBO, you must partner with an LEA. It is required this year, as Shannon indicated, that the partnership agreement must be signed by both the applicant and the primary partner. Because of the legal obligation to maintain confidentiality of student data, the department encourages local education agencies to gather the achievement data necessary to evaluate student progress. The local education agency should also accept responsibility for sharing the content areas of the testing standards and supporting curriculum with its partners. So this information is also um, drafted on the partnership agreement. Um, it's in Appendix C of the RFA, as well as you can download this new partnership agreement from the CCIP document library. Next is licensing. All required license must be in place or in process if applicable prior to receiving a 21st century grant award. Therefore, once notified of the award, the licensing process must be started and completed prior to first day of programming. So please make sure you do the um, work now as you begin to plan. Um, all programs that have students in um, elementary and middle school, you must have a license. Um, if you are a high school only program, it is not required that you have a license. But if you um, operate and you serve students in any grade level that would include elementary or middle schools, then you would need a license. Sites operated on a daily basis by a community-based organization will seek license through Ohio Department of Job and Family Services and those programs that are operated by the LEA must seek your license from the Ohio Department of Education. So in the RFA, we did give you a list of resources and contacts for ODGFS as well as ODE. Just keep in mind that the organization operating the daily programs and who are responsible for the day-to-day -day activities of students must demonstrate, um, must, must determine the correct license. Okay, also with licensing, there is a new requirement um, with ODGFS and ODE for the school age child care license. Um, this is a um, background check, new background check requirement. So in our RFA, there is a link that you can go to to review 
and to ensure that you understand fully what the background check requirements are for licensing. Grant assurances. Completion and submission of the 21st century grant constitute acceptance of all identified assurances and agreement to abide by the results of the selection process. Each program stakeholder is required to read the assurances prior to signing, as well as um, read and understand the assurances in the partnership agreement. So there are two grant assurances. You have your CCIP grant assurances, and while you're in the application, if you go to the um, side, you can click assurances. There are several assurances that you must review prior to um, completing your application. And also keep in mind the new requirement for partnership agreement. You must have your the applicant as well as the primary partner sign the partnership, review and sign the partnership agreement and upload it into the application. Um, see Appendix C for additional information. Thank you, Nina. Now we are going to go into the provision of the equitable services. Um, <clears throat> must be stressed that this is a very important provision as it is a federal requirement and it states that um, that these opportunities or, or services as far as 21st century programming um, are to be offered to non-public school students um, who are eligible to participate in 21st century program in the area served by the subgrantee or the grantee. Um, as they also have the right to participate entitled under federal law. It must be noted that non-public school students, their eligibility to participate <clears throat> in 21st century programming is not based on their low income status or Title I participation, but the need of that particular student. Um, and that can be in the form of academic support or socio-emotional support. Um, in your program implementation and operation, please be sure that you are operating with fidelity across the board, mirroring what is offered to public students and offering that same to your non-public students as well. To do this per the provision, applicants are required to begin timely and meaningful consultation with applicable non-public schools during the initial design and development of their 21st century program. Please note, partnering school districts will have this non-public information and are responsible for this non-public school consultation, um, ensuring that their partnering um, CBO or a community-based organization has that information if they don't already have that um, in order to properly communicate with those non-publics moving forward. In that consultation, if you are looking in the RFA, um, it lists the um, um, what that consultation should include at minimum, which, for example, includes how the children's needs will be identified and what services will be provided. And that information should be listed on page six of your RFA. Um, so please um, review those bullet points to see what should be included in your consultation as you begin to um, reach out to and consider your non-publics or include your non-publics um, in your, um, your target demographics for your uh, program. Um, it is required that the LEA um, is responsible if you are partnering with an LEA or if an LEA is um, um, applying for um, a grant, um, it is respond they are responsible for the provision. Um, if the CBO does not have knowledge of area non-publics, if there is not a current relationship with the non-publics in that area, CBOs are encouraged to work together with the LEA, which most times is your primary partner, to meet the provision requirement that in contact with non-public schools, such as um, if your district has a federal program uh, contact, you should be reaching out to them in order to ensure that you are meeting this requirement by sending out the um, 
information about programming to the non-publics in your area. And this is to ensure full compliance under this provision. Findings for recovery. By law, public contracts with the state of Ohio cannot be awarded to individuals or business businesses if a finding for recovery has been issued and is unresolved. Uh, per the Auditor of State, there's a database that contains this information and it will, it, for any applicants for the 21st Century Grant, you will be checked against this list to see if you are on this list. Um, anyone, it is a requirement that anyone that is applying for 21st century funds is being checked under this findings for recovery. Any unresolved findings um, found for your um, applicant under your application or your um, district um, will not be eligible to receive 21st century funds. Grant termination. If a grantee or subrecipient fails to adhere to grant requirements of any kind, the Office of Improvement and Innovation has the right to withhold, reduce, or terminate 21st century funding awards. Um, violation of grant rules, for example, violation of law, violation of program assurances that both the LEA and CBO are responsible for. Um, the lack of response to non-compliance issued um, under your program, um, corrective action plan implementation. Um, these are various things that can cause you to um, have your grant terminated. Um, and again, if you look to um, your RFA, um, there will be more information under that section on page um, seven. So please make sure you read that. Um, thoroughly. Um, and again, if your grant is terminated, um, the grantee or subrecipient must adjust the accounts that are due with no additional expenditures with liquidation of those funds and final, final expenditure report submitted via the CCIP. And now we're going to move on to performance measures with Charlotte Jones Ward. Hi everyone, this is Charlotte. Um, performance, I'm going to talk a little bit about performance measures, um, and that is in the RFA starting on page, the bottom of page six. Performance measures should impact the following things, reading, math, youth development, parent and family engagement, sustainability, and program data outcomes. Performance measures have been designed to achieve specific goals aligned to Ohio's strategic plan, our office, the Office of Improvement and Innovation, as well as the 21st century federal guidance. Alignment ensures that we are moving in the same direction. All the arrows are pointing in one direction. Once you receive a grant, performance measures should be sent be the central driving force behind your 21st century program. Performance measures will determine what you want to achieve and how you plan to achieve it and will become your roadmap to guide all programming efforts. Key stakeholders and all after school staff should be aware of performance measures and what role they play in helping to achieve them. Measures will also focus on the 21st century of the performance measures will also be the focus of your 21st century evaluation at the local, state, and federal levels. All grantees are required to work at meeting performance measures, which is why they are so important. Some key ideas to focus on when developing your performance measures. First, there would be implementation of evidence-based strategies, meaning that strategies being you should be should have some history or record of success and effectiveness. 
when working with low performing students, our target population. High quality programming, all strategies must be implemented with fidelity. High quality implementation is a key to making a difference. Considering, student, considering students' learning styles and social emotional needs are very important. We can't afford to place students at computers for 30 minutes each day and expect them to make a year's growth in reading and math. After school professionals should be hands-on and monitoring daily progress and changing and tweaking the curriculum to meet the needs of all students throughout the program cycle. Academic support. Reading and math must be offered daily with at least two hours of enrichment per week. Middle and high school programs must also focus on providing college and career readiness as well as dropout prevention. All strategies should be evidence-based and aligned to the school day curriculum to support Ohio's academic learning standards. Building relationships, building relationships and program sustainability. These two requirements really go hand in hand and are not mutually exclusive. Relationship building can help sustain your program. After school staff must build relationships with school day staff, meeting monthly to share data and link after school activities. Grantees are also expected to meet monthly with their primary partner for ongoing mutual support. A well thought out sustainability plan is required and must be developed to include key community members and stakeholders. With a strong plan and partnership development, schools can have a successful long term after school program. Positive youth development. Activities should be offered with students interest in mind. Activities should be engaging, interactive and opportunities for students to learn new things such as art, music, science, culture, culinary arts, even internships, apprenticeships, and college visits are appropriate. Youth development activities should be fun and engaging for all ages. For example, character education is a popular strategy used in many after-school programs, but the concept should be embedded in activities that are fun and meaningful not just a lecture with a handout to complete. So please be mindful of how you make learning exciting. Family engagement. Families should have multiple times, a minimum of three events to engage in after school activities. Events should address the needs of families. After school staff should reach out to families to find out what those needs are and develop activities to meet those needs. And finally, as you design your program, make sure that you address all the objectives and performance measures in the application completely and concisely. The quality of your performance measures will be the basis for funding and later the focus of the 21st century program evaluation. So please, when you're um, focusing on your grant, Please review the RFA uh, very thoroughly and make sure that you address all of the um, items in the performance measures. Moving on to personnel. You should have at least one certified teacher uh, that oversees the quality of your curriculum. That teacher must be certified in one subject at the grade span served. And some of the responsibilities um, that uh, may include or but are not limited to would be developing the lesson plans, alignment to the school day curriculum, and students' progress monitoring, developing of differentiated instructional plans, and IEPs. You need to have a program manager and program managers must identify one person to administer the grant. The program manager may fulfill the role as a site coordinator for only one site. And additional program managers can be assigned for the compliance system, uh, but that would be only for reporting purposes in the compliance system. So you need one program manager and 
a site coordinator for each site. And you can have up to three sites. The site coordinator. Each grant may have, have up to three sites and each must identify a site coordinator. Program personnel, volunteers, and contractors shall meet all licensing requirements for working with students, including appropriate background checks. The licensing agency may have additional personnel requirements, including professional development. Um, and, that, and what they're referring to there is the ODJFS. Okay, so that can, that uh, covers like personnel, and if you have any questions about that, please um, make a note, and we can follow up with that. Nutrition. Nutrition is very important, as you know. Students are in school all day, and they need a break when the program starts, and a lot of times programs provide um, their, their snack uh, or meal uh, at the beginning of the program, but when you do it is is up to you. However, um, you must provide a daily nutritional snack. Um, and please note that uh, food of any kind is not an allowable expense, even uh, when you have family events. For detailed information about the after school food and snack program, um, you should review your RFA and um, those links are available to you with lots of um, good information so that you can um, secure the necessary meals and snacks that you need for your program. Okay, thanks for your attention and this concludes my section and I'm gonna turn it back over to Shannon. Awarded recipients must conduct a self-assessment and or formal local evaluation using a qualified evaluator. It is mandatory that each program engages at least one person to assist the program staff in gathering, tracking, and evaluating data to ensure program performance objectives. Expenditures for a program evaluator can be up to $10,000 per fiscal year. Subrecipients cannot enter into a contract that crosses over fiscal years. Contracts shall be renewed annually. Awarded programs will be required to complete an evaluation design. The evaluation design is a map that allows the subrecipient to answer the following three questions. Are we doing what we said we would do? How are we doing it? And is what we are doing making a difference. In regards to the local evaluation, once an applicant has been rewarded, our office will provide you a local evaluation manual. Understanding that evaluating is sometimes challenging, we, um, our attempt is to make it as easy as possible. You will receive some support. In advance, we just simply ask you to secure a qualified evaluator for your program. Next, state evaluation. The United States Department of Education requires the Ohio Department of Education to conduct an annual comprehensive statewide evaluation of Ohio's 21st century program. This particular um, evaluator, the state pays for. This is not the responsibility of the applicant or the awardee. The Ohio Department of Education contracts with external evaluators to conduct the evaluation. All 21st century grant subrecipients as a condition of funding will be required to participate in the evaluation. The subrecipients are evaluated on the components of their applications. The department may ask subrecipients to provide additional data as needed. It is each subrecipient's responsibility to provide any data requested for the evaluation or accommodate any on-site data collection. Evaluation results may impact grant continuation funding. Lastly, we have our annual performance reporting. This particular reporting is not outlined in the um, 
RFA because applicants are not required to act on um, this portion. However, we do want applicants to know in advance that the annual performance reporting um, is something that all awardees have to participate in. It is simply a collection of data that is sponsored by the United States Department of Education. It is a requirement of our state to ensure that all grantees participate. All right, so we are now moving on to discuss approved activities under the 21st Century Grant. If you are awarded, um, you can find this information in your RFA on page 10. <clears throat> so with regards to approved activities, in addition to, in addition to um, the academic support that programs should be providing in the reading and mathematics areas, um, all 21st century programs um, should also be incorporating positive youth development activities. And there are a wide range of activities and efforts that um, could be provided for students and their families um, that could be done very creatively and out the box. Um, for uh, maximum engagement that have included but not, are not limited to, um, for example, art, music, and cultural activities. Um, this could be an opportunity for programs to um, display um, uh, information learned throughout the year. Um, it can be also a family event as well. Um, tutoring services. Um, service learning projects. I'm just going through giving examples of a few. Um, and that could be opportunities where um, if you are in your community and want to take an, um, a, you know, take time to um, learn about the importance of, um, you know, having a clean planet, you can use that to um, um, work with your students to um, clean up, you know, that area and, and reflect on that and learn at the same time. Um, various physical activities, um, expanded learning, um, a library service hours, um, and drug and violence prevention programs with um, also considering um, counseling programs. And um, as mentioned earlier, character education programs are really important as well. Um, and so as you begin to plan um, for um, the potential of you receiving these funds, um, these are just examples of activities that you can um, um, look into that are approved for you to implement. But again, just think about the, the students and your target populations that you are serving and consider that um, as you begin to think about that implementation. Going on into program compliance monitoring, um, per re grant requirements, um, this is a substantial piece of what needs to happen um, throughout the duration of your grant cycle. Um, and you can find this information in your RFA on page 10 as well. Uh, all potential um, subrecipients should be aware that there are substantial monetary requirements. Um, and these are grant requirements, so there is no option. You have to comply when we are requesting information from you um, with regards to um, your grant. So um, the U.S. Department of Education or USDOE um, requires that each subrecipient of the 21st century grant participates in this monitoring process. Um, the Ohio Department of Education um, has then from that guidance developed and implemented um, our own monitoring process comprised of the following three components. The first being a federal data, co data collection process, um, which is um, APR. 
So for those of you who are on the call that are currently working with us um, as grantees, you are, you've heard and familiar with this process. Um, if you are looking to apply after this call, you know, after you receive this information, you will receive more um, details about um, APR and what their requirements are. Um, an annual submission of reports and results of your local program evaluation. Um, and this is a really important piece because um, this gives us an opportunity to, to really see um, the effectiveness of your program on a local level. Um, and uh, with both components, um, you are highly encouraged to work with your program evaluator if you choose to hire them. And again, per Shannon's um, comment about them, you do have the flexibility to hire them at that cap of no more than $10,000 um, a year to work with them to help you to compile that data. Um, your uh, program compliance monitoring also includes um, on-site monitoring visits, which also includes a desk review um, at least twice during your five-year grant cycle. Um, and any sub-recipients will receive um, those guidelines upon award. Um, so just I wanted to also mention that if you are um, if you are applying and are awarded more than one grant that during the the years that you are up for compliance, you will have reviews for all of those grants. So that's just and again, more guidance will come um, as you um, if you are awarded um, uh, 21st century funds. <clears throat> The competitive review grant read, um, this is a very important piece of this entire process with regards to um, this competition, one that is taken very seriously um, within the department and with the 21st century team. Um, with this process, and again, you can find this in your RFA on page 11, um, the Ohio Department of Education um, is ensuring that all applications being reviewed are um, ensured eligibility and all application requirements are met. Um, you must include all the criteria listed here, including details of sites, locations, staffing, performance measures, etc. If your application is incomplete, it will not be considered and will not move on through the competitive grant rate. So please be aware as you are completing your applications through the CCIP that make sure that all information that is required in that application is in there. Because if it's not, it is not our responsibility to reach out to you or the grant readers to correct those issues. Once it's submitted, that's what we're looking at. So please make sure that your applications are complete. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> Um, information that is entered into these sections inappropriately may not be recognized by the readers assigned to rate these applications. Again, it is not their responsibility to make these corrections. So please make sure that if you or someone that you're working with is completing them, that it is reviewed very carefully because it is not the reader's responsibility to correct or consider those errors in their read. If missing, Grant readers are not required to search the application for additional information or explanation, nor will readers make assumptions or interpretations about the intent of your response. So if you're not clear, they're going to take what you're giving them as they are reading it. So please don't assume anything. We, again, just need you to be clear in what you're um, sending us as far as your application. The Ohio Department of Education utilizes an independent grant reader pool. We, as a department, screen and train these readers prior to scoring these applications, what, what is submitted through the CCIP. Any associate of organizations that are applying for a grant, they are not eligible to participate in this grant reader pool. So to, to clarify, if you are interested in reading for 21st century and you are currently considering applying for a grant and in this associated with an organization or district that is a part of that process you cannot read for 21st century for the state of Ohio so it, that's very clear so we're just putting that in there so there's no confusion and in part of that process um, uh, the rater uh, the grant reader will assure that no conflict of interest exists between the rater or the reader and the application that is under consideration 
Um, prior to final application calibration or scoring, um, 21st Century and Department staff will review all application scores and identify any discrepancies that are found. Grant readers will then resolve these discrepancies so that the ranking process is as precise as possible. Um, from there, those scores will undergo an, um, a comprehensive analysis by a third party contractor that we that is worked with um, to determine the final ranking of each application. So again, please review this and if there are any questions regarding this section, please um, you have the, the opportunity to do so put that in the question box and we will make sure to answer those questions before the end of the um, the presentation today. And finally, for me, the grievance procedure, just clarification here, and this is also on page 11. As an applicant, you have the opportunity to request a hearing after the competition. If you so feel you need to, um, please refer to Edgar 76.401 for more information on that process. So now we're going to move on to use of funds with Nina. Thanks, Charmaine. Okay, now we're getting down to the money. <laughs> um, in order to use 21st century funding, um, you must be aware as you begin to plan on what's a, an allowable use of funds. So you must budget for allowable expenses to support academic, positive youth development and family engagement enrichment initiatives. Applicants must complete the budgetary, budgetary section of the CCIP application. It is a, sec, is, is a budget grid as well as a narrative. So there is a prompt in regards to the budget stating that you must um, break down the expenditures in detail by itemizing the expenses you anticipate for the first year of this award. Um, budget activities must align with the performance measures and strategies written in the application. All accounts, records, and other supporting documentation to, to pertaining to all costs incurred shall be maintained for five years. So our records retention policy um, requires you to maintain those records and documentation for five years. Um, supporting documentation for expenditures is also required. Um, so make sure you keep good tracking of the expenditures. Um, in regard to federal funds, keep in mind, these funds must be reasonable, allocable, and necessary. Um, all funds must be, uh, well, in regard to the documentation for all of the expenses, you need to ensure that you keep and maintain all receipts, invoices that's pertaining to all expenditures. Um, and we can avail, um, request those um, throughout your grant cycle. So maintain those um, is a five-year records retention requirement. So let's get down to what's allowable and what's not. So a few things, um, as you begin to plan and write your application, keep in mind transportation costs. How will your students get to or from or both programming? So those transportation vouchers, any type of bus passes, if you're going to hire a bus driver, um, those salaries and benefits for the bus driver are allowable. Any type of curriculum material. Where those? What are those evidence-based curriculums that you would be utilizing for programming? They are also um, allowable. Um, keep in mind, secular curriculum is not an allowable expenditure as you begin to plan. Staffing, any type of staff benefits, salaries for your teachers and tutors. Are you going to contract services? for um, your staff. So those are some things you need to think about. Think about, are you going to provide student staff or parent incentives? Those are also allowable expenditures if reasonable and necessary. 
um, program evaluation. As Shannon mentioned, you can spend up to $10,000 per grant on evaluation cost. Um, even if you choose to submit three applications, if you have three different sites per grant, the total for the three sites still have to fall within that $10,000 category because it is per grant. Um, other things, contractors for youth development, um, parent and family engagement speakers, um, supplies, um, equipment, printers, um, any type of staff professional development. Think about that. You are required to train your staff, so make sure you include those costs while you are planning for training and reimbursement for travel. Um, also, in regard to rent, rent, rent is an allowable expense, but we highly encourage you to partner with um, the district or um, have um, negotiate some sort of partnership or some sort of agreement um, for those after school or before school activities. Okay, unallowable. So everyone knows that food is not an allowable expenditure. And if you don't know, now you do know. Um, so food of any kind is not allowable unless it is tied to curriculum supplies. Therefore, if it is tied to curriculum supplies, that would be that part of your programming um, offerings or clubs that you would have a culinary arts or cooking class. If so, there should be associated um, lesson plans, as Charlotte mentioned, in regard to that certified teacher. So you should have lesson plans um, and also on your schedule for your week or year, you need to ensure that you have culinary arts or cooking class and that will be documentation that is requested um, if you are audited or under fiscal review. Grant writer fees is not an allowable expenditure. Any type of purchase of a vehicle or a building, unallowable. Do not incorporate that into your budget. Any type of um, infrastructure cost for capital expenditures, um, that is not um, an allowable expense. Um, in regard, if there's questions in regard to building um, repairs or um, renovations, um, if the item is not mobile, then it's not a, an allowable expenditure. Um, supplies for fundraising, not an allowable expenditure. You cannot buy supplies for a fundraiser only for purposes of programming for after school program. Also, as Shana mentioned, there is a cap on the governance and administration expense that you can incorporate into your budget, it is 15%. So if you add 15%, um, exceed 15% as you begin to budget, um, you will not be able to submit your application. You will have an error message. So just letting you know in advance. Um, these expenses would include um, for governance, non-instructional services and activities, including planning, administration, personnel development and interagency inter coordination. So typically, if you have a staff person assigned to governance, they will not um, see children um, as part of programming. Um, keep in mind as you begin to plan and work with your treasurer in regard to budgeting, that budgets are aligned to the uniform school accounting system, which we call use as. Um, use as and anticipated expenditures are coded based on object and purpose codes. So if you do not understand on page 12, make sure that you work with your treasurer, go to the link for at use as and look at the manual so you can fully understand those codes that are required. Once you are awarded a grant, expenditures must be tracked under fund 599. That is the designated fund for 21st century, um, for the 21st century grant. Each grant, so if you receive multiple grants, you must track in fund 99, <coughs> but you must have a separate cost center. It's a, on your special own special cost center for each grant. So when fiscal reviews come up, we need to ensure that you can identify the funds that's being spent. 
is associated with the actual grant that you are being um, reviewed under. Funds received is for immediate cash need and must be spent within five business days. So just keep in mind, if you are awarded a grant and you submit a project cash request, those that's, that is how you receive funding by submitting the project cash request and all requests are through the CCIP. So everything is electronic. Um, funds that you do receive, just keep in mind, they must be spent within five days. Okay. Um, in regard to funding awards. Okay, so we're moving to funding awards. Okay, the Office of Innovation and Improvement will determine the number of local 21st century programs that will be funded based on our award that we receive from U.S. Department of Education. Um, first, when funding, keep in mind, um, in the past, our award has been approximately 44 million plus. Um, we do award first our um, successful continuation plans. So those programs that are in their grant cycle, in the life, grant life cycle, they will be awarded first. Any funds that's um, remaining after we award will be part of our competitive grant process and those funds will go strictly to new awards but they are based on quality applications from any selected option so for each option we are having three um, competitions for option one one for option two and one for option three so each each option will have we will identify quality applications for each competition and those funds will be dispersed accordingly. Finally, notification of awards. We anticipate, and we have in the past um, on regularly um, awarded and made the award notifications at the end of July. Um, so we do push for, for mid-July, mid but you will be notified via the CCIP history log of your award, regardless if it is awarded or denied. Applications will receive this electronic notification for all funding decisions via the CCIP history log, and the award letters will go directly to the superintendent or for those that, it, that are in the CCIP authorized representative role. Okay, so, the next session section are the appendixes. So appendix A, appendix B, and C. So please review your appendix um, as a resource and a reference. Appendix A is the actual scoring rubric with all prompts you must complete. Appendix B are frequently asked questions. Highly recommend for you to review the Q&A. And appendix C is new this is a template partnership agreement that every applicant and their primary partner must sign and upload into the specified section of the application. This um, Appendix C is also available for you to download from the CCIP document library. Once you go to the document library under the competitive funding application tab, click on 21st century, you will see the partnership agreement that you can download and share with your partner and sign. So this concludes our webinar. You are now invited to ask questions and our entire team is available to answer your questions. Thank you, Nina. Um, and yes, um, as I have been stating, um, if for those of you who are in the, the question tool, I have been responding that we have been receiving your questions and we are going to, when we finished early, so that's good, um, so that we're going to take our time to answer um, all questions that were um, presented. 
Um, in the meantime, um, I am going to stop the recording and this will be posted shortly after on our website for anyone that was not able to attend, um, as well as the PowerPoint. For those who are asking, it will be posted with this presentation, um, the recording on our website. So I'm going to stop that now before we begin our question.